The Bamberger Electric Railroad was an interurban train that ran between Salt Lake and Ogden, similar to what's being constructed right now at great expense. It looks like there's a lot of people along the Wasatch Front that never even knew such a thing existed, and even more amazing, existed almost a hundred years ago. It came into being, I think, in the early 1900s, and it lasted till the 1950s, and it was an electric railway similar to our track system. It wasn't a fly-by-night outfit that just barely got a little bit of ridership. It was a major part of the transportation picture along the Wasatch Front. The name came from the Bamberger family, which was a pretty popular family in, in the area, industrial giants, and one of the Bambergers was actually our governor for a while, I think it was Simon Bamberger. One of the key features of this railroad is they built what is now Lagoon, the amusement park, was just built on a piece of swampy land that was adjacent to the railroad in Farmington. The name Lagoon comes, as you might know, a lagoon is kind of a small body of water near a larger body of water that's cut off and a little bit inland. And I think there was such a body there, and that's where they got the name. The park turned out to be a major uh, destination for a lot of people, besides going from Ogden to Salt Lake, their destination was the Lagoon Amusement Park. You gotta realize back in the early half of the 20th century, there weren't a lot of facilities like this around. The terminals were in Ogden and Salt Lake, mainly down in the business districts. The Salt Lake Terminal was somewhere near where the Salt Palace is today. North Salt Lake is where they had their major shops for the Bamberger Railroad. But most of the line between Salt Lake and North Salt Lake have, has been obliterated with I-15 and all kinds of other construction like that. But from North Salt Lake up through Farmington, there's still a lot of bits and pieces of the old right-of-way that are still vacant. And a lot of them have been uh, used up with roads. There's actually been roads built on parts of the, the old Bamberger right-of-way. And there's not very many physical structures left there, but there's one, there's a major bridge by Slim Olson's going over Highway 89, which used to be 89 and 91 before the interstate. There's a road there now where they built kind of a collector road coming out of Bountiful and tying in there right across from Slim Olson's. And that road actually goes over the old Bamberger Railroad Bridge and it's still there and it's a massive structure. There used to be a little sign on each side of there that said had the Bamberger logo, but those, those are long gone. There's another structure, there's a building kind of on the west side of downtown Bountiful on 2nd West. The, the railroad used to go right along 2nd West there on the west side of it. And I think there was a passenger station right there too. It's about, oh, third or fourth south, something like that. And that building is now being used by the Bountiful Power as some offices and shops and warehouses and stuff like that. Let's talk about the train. The train was a lot like tracks in that there was two different modes of operation from what I've seen. One mode was where they would have a train of several cars, and I'm not sure if they were all under their own power or if there was one pulling the whole thing but they had several, like a modern passenger train, they had an engine or a power unit and then they had several cars. But another type of operation that gained momentum was the advent of this single car that was a combination passenger car and power unit all in one. They were just individual cars, but they could be linked together if need be to form a train. Probably in the late 1940s when a lot of railroads in America started suffering a decline in their passenger business due to the advent of cars and better highways and airlines and stuff, Bamberger itself started suffering a lot of those same problems. They lost a lot of ridership and the end came fast. Probably by about the mid-1950s it was just, just ceased to exist. Rails and ties were pulled up. A lot of that right away has been converted into roads now, where there were no roads before. It kind of fit, fit right in to, at least it's still serving for transportation needs. 
In North Salt Lake, there's a, a mile or so strip where the railroad was right alongside the old US 8991, and that area has been turned into like a parkway, a long strip parkway now. It's really beautiful. Most of it has been turned into something relatively worthwhile, and the railroad, is, as it was, is almost impossible to find unless a body really knows where to look. One last ironic note, it was the need for transportation between Ogden and Salt Lake and the relative lack of roads and cars that led to the success of the Bamberger Railroad, but it's those same roads and cars that led to the demise of the Bamberger Railroad. And here we are almost 100 years later building a new Ogden to Salt Lake rail system even though we already had one a long, long time ago. I think it was a little bit ahead of its time.